can't tell me nothing about this crypto. Uh -huh. This old day, these forensics, strictly for my hackers. Hackers on the grind, I ain't forget all you. my port scanners, all my SQL injectors, my exploit devs. Testing. Okay, there we go. Hello, folks. It's another wonderful Wednesday, and this is your host, N Commander, of another exciting episode of Hack All N Commander, who is currently fighting with, uh, go away, go away video intro, you've done your job. Uh, it, it's been one of those mornings, mornings, evenings. Um, so, long story short, um, Yesterday was hectic. I had this idea for today. We are going to be doing some DAWs programming, but first I actually have to install DAWs because today has been really hectic. And um, let's just say I didn't get there after a long programming binge last night. So what I I did, this project we're doing today, or we're going to at least try and start, is something I actually have a need for uh, as far as software preservation goes. Uh, and that is the ability to down to sector dump an entire hard drive via um, uh, via the network. Um, uh, Pro Chroma Ryu. It's going to be open Watcom because I do not want to have to depend on a um, DAWs extender. It's kind of annoying as far as I can understand, as far as I can tell, to use a um, to access the packet driver. But I've also never done TCP IP programming under DAWs. So this is going to be kind of a let's learn, let's experiment. I don't expect we're going to finish tonight, but we're going to get there. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to actually, uh, we need to use PCM. Uh, and we have to run it under wine as root. And believe it or not, there is a method to this madness. Because I need to be able to bind it to my network. Because I, um, the, I have a ThinkPad sitting right here on the desk uh let me see if i can get in view so um the reason i want to do this is i want to actually know that this is going to work so we're going to be using ms dos 6 open Watcom, and the microsoft uh network client because that can use nibbles 2 drivers um but um i am open to suggestions here and as side pocket is kindly pointing out in chat DEFCON 2.1 is raising money for charity again. We are currently raising money for the Rape, Abuse, and Instance na uh, National Network, the nation's largest anti-sexual violence organization. Um, the rest of the information is in chat. It's very long to read. But they're a awesome organization, and we are hoping to raise $400. And as usual, when we reach that goal, uh, I get to suffer, although I'm currently building up my suffering because we still haven't done the suffering from the last one because COVID. If 2020 was a punchline, the punchline would end because COVID. So let's um let's start with setting up a virtual machine. So let's get a DAWs build. Um, you know, we're just gonna call this DAWs 6.2 because uh, you can't see it on camera and the way the camera is set up, I can't easily move it. Uh, my normal webcam went to heaven, so I'm actually using my phone, and as it turns out, it works a lot better. So, my good old friend Cyrocell gave me a 486, and the only requirement is I need to dump the hard drive. The problem is he gave me a machine with SCSI. So, the, uh, the misery is real. But that machine also has an integrated NIC on it, which I believe is an Intel chip. So this is why this needs to exist. So this is why we're using PCM in Wine as root, so I can use PCAP. I already have Samba set up correctly. Uh, so in theory, that word, this should just work. So let's create a new hard drive. We are going to cross compile from Linux. Uh, I am not sadistic enough to actually do this completely under DAWs. But um, one step at a time. So what's a good hard drive size? Chat, what's your favorite type number? Let, let, uh, 
let let us know. And yes, I did see that YouTube had um, decided. I, I I've been wondering about that. I wonder if the Rhea finally came. So um, this is the second time I've had to dump a hard drive through uh, unusual means. I actually had to dump this ThinkPad's hard drive. I did it through the serial port, and I could technically do that again, but um, let's just say it was long and painful. And you know, the other thing is, I've got this. This is one of my most recent eBay acquisitions. That is a token ring network adapter, and I have a lot more token things coming. Oh, uh, I think I just caused. Okay, you know it's going to be a good a uh, good night when you cause GI Jack PTSD flashbacks in the first twenty minutes of the stream. Um, and as a note, speaking of YouTube committing suicide, uh, my video card has been infected by gremlins. So, if the stream suddenly goes down, don't go anywhere. It just means that my GPU went off for a smoke break and I'm rebooting. Um, this actually happened last time we streamed, and I still can't get the problem to go away. So, um, let's just keep that in mind. And, uh, have fun. Okay, so that's a Type 43. Drive created. Uh, you know what? We're gonna go, we're gonna go real fancy. We're gonna have a DX2 processor, baby. With 16 megabytes of memory. So, um, you're <laughs> so GI Jack, you are going to really, really love the bit of IBM networking equipment that's going to be darkening my doorstep. The UPS guy is going to get a hernia bringing it up the stairs, and children are going to start crying in the corner when I plug it in. And it also fits really nice with fail server. <laughs> All right, I forgot to take it out of CGA. That that looks hideous. That that just looks horrible. Um, this, you know, it may it may be November, but it's not no VGA November. Oh, I think I'm going to help for that. Okay. So um, the other problem I've had as of late is that I upgraded OBS. OBS is kind of been a little drunk, so all my scenes went away. Let's see if we can uh, bring some back. So let's use that. It's uh, sort of okay. Let me crop out that menu bar. Because I'm running this under wine. I've got things I'm not used to dealing with. Oh, that actually looks not good. Yay, technology. So, uh, yes, I have to deal with virtualized uh, CMOS error. In fact, I even have a Y2K bug here. PC, uh, PCM is trying to keep the clock in sync with my real-time clock. You notice how it's at 1920? Uh, I need to actually turn off the clock synchronization because the system will not actually boot like this. I've actually, this is a, uh, ask me how I know this because I've been cracking copy protection for the last three days and, um, yeah, why did I go the long way around? Okay. This is fine. We're all fine. Uh, do not adjust the vertical or the horizontal. Okay, so we are November 11th, 1995. 1995, that was a good year. That was a good year. Let's uh, auto-detect our hard drives. Uh, accept parameters, yes. Come on. It takes a really long time for it to determine that no, there's nothing actually there. So, um, you actually can't type it in. You have to use the up-down arrows. I don't know why. You just have to. I, um... I never had a machine. I had a machine with a Win BIOS, but I don't think I actually had the AMI BIOS. My f very first computer was a hand-me-down Compact Desk Pro 386, and its setup program was um, cute. Let's let's that that's the word I'm going with. Um, the second machine I had was an AST Premium Exec, which was a laptop, so there was not much to do with the BIOS there. So let's see here. If we write that all out, does it actually boot? And then we need to still put the DOS disk in. We need to put the DOS disk in, and then we need to put... We're going to use the MS networking stack. So I'm currently going for my little f pile of floppies. Oh, man. If I really hate myself, I'd install Microsoft DOS 4.0, but no. No, I am not doing that. I actually had to look into that recently. Um, I was working on a new netware um video and i actually have shelved it for the time being 
but I had to install DAWs 4.0, and good lord, it makes me long for Vista. It was, it was that bad. It was horrendous. It was cats and dogs living together. So um, that's F disk done. Um, I think my I think my VM is having some issues. I don't know why, but I I, I am having that distinct feeling something is wrong here. Alright, let's do a hard reset. Because obviously I've got ROM basic and a VGA. I didn't do anything to it. I literally partitioned the hard drive. It's doing this. What gremlins have invested my system? Oh, I know what's going on. Hold on, hold on. I actually do know what's going on. So I need to drop in the setup. For this BIOS, I've used this BIOS a few times because it tends to work with just about everything, including vines. Um, but the problem with this BIOS is it defaults to booting off the um, hard drive first. So you get weird and strange behavior like that. So... Is it booting? Yeah, okay, it's booting. Uh, and now we're formatting. Okay, there we go. And now we get to watch some really old advertising. So now would be a great time to fill out your registration card. When you send it in, Microsoft will wonder why you're registering DAWs in, um, in 2020. I actually have a copy of Back Office 4.0 on my bookcase and Visual J++ with registration cards. I am sorely tempted to fill them in and post them off. I really, really, really am. Um, Side Pocket is correct. The alternate title show for a hack called End Commander was End Commander Hates Himself. Um, but I don't think that would properly, properly incorporate the, um, the amount of bullcrap we see on this show. Because let's be honest. When we do a stinking load on Hack Alt and Commander, it's a proper stinking load. We, um, I actually had someone in my Discord, um, they watched one of my earlier streams where I installed OS2 1.0, and good lord did I, did that corpse smell. It, it was, it was properly ripe. It, it had just the right fragrant odors. Just like running drive space to make more, uh, dr more hard drive space, uh, more expanded memory or running MemMaker to optimize your memory because MS DAWs does what DR DAWs does. So, speaking of other things that I've got hack alt end commander potential, um, I've got a Windows CE device. I'm not going to unbox it tonight. I can see it on my bookcase. It has a keyboard and it was the type of device that we used to drool over when I was in the early 90s. And we're probably going to end up trying to port NetHack to it. Because I know NeoZeed actually got NetHack to build for ARM, but I need a Super H port. Because, yes, I actually have a handheld with a Super H processor. That is not a Dreamcast. Because I realize I have to add that bit. Um, release my mouse, please. Release thy mouse. Why is... <sighs> this is why I don't like running PCM under Wine. The uh, mouse capture is kind of iffy, but uh, okay. So, um, brain park. So, the thing I've been wanting to play with for a while, I don't know when I'm going to get to it because God knows my project list is getting um, <clears throat> long. I really want to do some stuff with DR DAWs and Novell DAWs. Uh, I know MS DAWs is what everyone uses in preservation. That or DAWs 7 or 8 from 95 and 98. But, you know, DR DAWs was a pretty big thing back in the day. I actually remember people that used it. Um, I don't really like free DAWs all that much, mostly due to compatibility warning issues. Um, there are times where it makes sense to use it, but not when you're actually trying to run it on vintage hardware. Although it does generally work just fine. Okay, so um, I want to say LGR did a video about free DOS compatibility, although maybe it wasn't LGR, but it was very hit or miss with a lot of software. Um, so 
Yeah. So, Neozeed, um, I have a Netware horror story for you. I learned that in 1993, Novell was shipping Netware with the client that was incompatible with DAWs 5 and 6, which had shipped two years prior. I kid you not, because there are updated files that go past 1991 into 1992, but the, the Netware requester does not work on those versions. There was much screaming involved with that. That's another hack alt N Commander shirt. There was much screaming involved. So, uh, somewhere in my driver's folder. Oh, where did I put it? Uh, frig. I wrote these out the physical disks and I didn't save the disk images. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I'm a genius. <laughs> I wrote, uh, uh, let me switch to full desktop so you can see what I'm seeing. Um... So, here's the MS Network Client right here. I've got two executables. I don't actually have them in disk image format. Because I'm a genius. Alright, um, I've got some disk images I can use for this. It's, uh, I had to do some... And when I say some, I mean a lot of reverse engineering recently. So, let me... I should have a... Yeah, okay, that will work. So... MS client one dot image. I know if I use M format, bad things will happen. So let's format in the VM and then we'll just copy the files over. Uh, open. Okay. Let's read. Yeah. So and we're just gonna do it in the format. And then we can M copy the installer over. We'll let that do its format. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I found... So I actually set Verdict, and I discovered that the PC DAWs 3 one um, sort of works, and the specific PC DAWs 4 one does very interesting things when you load it onto a more modern version of DAWs. It, um, it was a learning experience, and not in a good way. All right, so I've also learned that you have to eject these disks because um, PCM doesn't actually save them until you eject them. Um, don't ask me how I know this, because it sucked. We'll find this out the first way. So, can I... I can't remember if these are self-extracting or if you need to... Um, if they run the install. I think they're self-extracting. So, what I'll do is I'll copy them here. And we'll just extract. I already have Samba set up correctly to work with this legacy client because I actually was using this recently to get files on and off my net, my ThinkPad. So I know the network setup on Absolution, which is this desktop, is correct and should work. Yeah, okay, it was self-extracting. That's fine. This is fine. Um, I do like how it says authentic files verified, Microsoft Corporation. I wonder how that does the signature val validation. I, I legitimately do. And I actually wonder if that's still Microsoft's phone number. Alright, so... Let's... Because I actually need this client. I need to end up using this client all the time. The Novell one's a little less... Memory hog. But... The honest fact of the matter is that this uses standard Nibulous drivers. So I, I tend to use it a lot when I'm dealing with weird stuff. So... Um, all right, so let's get rid of that. And let's see here. I have that horrible sinking feeling. Tonight is not going to be watch N Commander set up MS DOS networking so he can do the develop for the next stream. But I actually do think we'll get further than that because I know what I'm doing. Uh, I've set this all up before. It's just oh, wrong thing. It's just um. I didn't have time to do this beforehand because 2020 is a busy time. Let's let's put it like that. 
I mean, right now, I don't know where folks in chat are. I live in New Jersey, and um, it's not good. I mean, that's really what it boils down to is COVID is kind of surging here. I had to go into Manhattan to yesterday, and it was... little it was iffy and you know I just and I would like my mouse back please um jack drive a okay so that's one down um you know and I just I have to wonder just a little bit as you know what is the new normal going to look like when all is said and done so let's put in ms client 2 star that's fine copy a star, star i'm guessing this is going to be another self-extracting archive um and this is a good time to mention that defcon 21 is currently helping raise money for rain for the rape abuse incest national network our starting goal is to raise 400 dollars and the donations will be handled entirely by a 50c3 uh 50 50c3 party and will not be handled by us there's a link below the chat uh, for uh, Tiffany to handle the um, donation process. It would really mean a lot if you, you could help us reach that goal and to help watch my suffering. No, wait, that doesn't sound right. Anyway, um, last time we did the, did the fundraiser, it was a huge success. We, so what was the total amount we raised? It was a fair bet. So you know, helping uh, do more. You know, it makes these streams... It, it, it helps... It makes me help think I'm actually making a difference with these streams. Um, so, maybe it's just my head, but who knows. Okay, that's disc two being made. Progress! It is a thing. It's, it's kind of interesting, though, that the MS Network... So... The, the M what this is called the Microsoft client and what it actually is is a stripped down version of Microsoft workgroup add-ons for DAWs which God knows is a long and horrible horrible name like you can see it, it actually has a copy of Winsock and then this um, became was ported to Windows NT became 32-bit and then was ported back at, under Windows for workgroups and the Windows for workgroups add-on which then shipped this as its DAWs component. So this client actually has a long and rather colorful history. So, okay. So that's the installed disks being made. You can, you technically don't need to do this, but I know I'm going to need these again because God knows I, 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 I have so many DAWs VMs that I, I, I get them mixed up. I have actually lost virtual machines. So let's run setup. This should have an NE2000 card and should be able to find it. So the client, so this is just a pure client. There is a way to modify this installer to actually get the full um, workstation support and actually be able to share from MS-DAWs. I've never actually tried using it. Uh, and I'd probably be more inclined to use the actual workgroup add-on for DAWs, but this is fine. Uh, that's fine. So username is in commander. Uh, I want to run the full work group, uh, computer name. Let's call it victim because that's probably the right thing. We are not in domain, so that's fine. Do not log in. What's interesting is that domain login here, I wonder if this is for NT or if this is... Yeah, well, you know, this is actually for Windows NT in addition to Land Manager. So they were updating this quite quite late, actually. Windows for Workgroups doesn't even um, mention that. So I do need to add TCP IP support and rip my conventional memory. Let's see here. Listed options are correct. So the OEM driver disk is the second one. I don't know why they did it this way, but that's how it works. And then it's going to ask me for the first one again. So fingers crossed. I do think it is possible to get Samba to use Layer 2 NetBIOS, which would be wonderful for my conventional memory. But... Oh, come on. Give me my mouse back. But I only ever use this when I have to put files over a network, and it is possible to get this to work 
Um, you know what? I'm, I'm sitting here thinking about this, and I'm almost wondering if I should have used the Odin drivers for this. The reason I say that is that Novell drivers exist for everything, uh, at least in this time period. Although Nidless drivers are also pretty common, so I guess it doesn't really matter. I guess we'll check it with both once we get it up and running. The biggest problem is that with the Odin drivers, I don't have a way to emulate netware. I would actually have to run netware to do file sharing with them. So if I did this correctly, this should do DHCP onto my network and get an IP address. Well, it's trying. It it found the network card. I don't know if this is going to actually work. I don't actually remember what PC the emulator is bound to. It's taking a long time. So the DAWs TCP IP stack, at least the Microsoft one, is a notorious memory hog. I don't really want to use it, but I do want file sharing, so I'm going to just suck it up and deal with it. Yeah, this is not talking to the network. Okay. Do I want to be brave and fiddle with the network settings while I'm on stream? Yeah, that's not talking to the network. If it was talking via slurp, it would have already gone. That means it's, it's having some issues. I don't really want to run wire shuffle on the stream. So let's stop emulation. Uh, what is it down to? Oh, I, I know what the problem is. Craig, that's a problem. That is actually a problem. Hold on. So... Yeah, no, that's the correct interface. What is going on here? So, start. Okay. So, that's starting. Machine. Oh, I... I it's network card settings may be disagreeing, so... The network card in PCM is address port 300 interrupt free. I don't know where DAWs expects it. Let's let's do the old F8 boot so I can actually get in there and configure it. Yuzid, um, thank you for the donation. It is hugely appreciated. That is our first donation. I believe that is our first donation. Yes, that is our first donation. So come on. There we go. There we go. Okay. So, the DAWs client, most of it is configured here in system. So, there's any 2000. I don't remember. How do I set the interrupt? So that is fine. Protocol.in. Yeah, so this is where it tries to do the DHCP handshake. So, uh, here we go. So, IO base 300, interrupt 3. So, that's correct. This should see my router. Okay, I'm going to pull Wireshark up on the other monitor just so I can see what's going on. Uh, for obvious reasons, I don't want to be Wiresharking on stream because we've already done the end commander docs himself stream. So, um, I'm, uh, I have a second monitor and I'm going to use it. So I'm gonna watch the DHCP traffic. I'm guessing my router is being a butt and it doesn't like this uh, network adapter for whatever reason. So let's see here. Actually, now that I've got filtered, I, I don't mind showing it on the screen. So let's, let's take a look here. So here's Wireshark. It's looking for DHCP stuff on the bound interface. And it's not seeing it. It's not seeing Jack. Oh, wait, no, that is something. What is sending that? Oh, that time it worked. Yeah, type your username or press enter if it's end commander. I have no password. Create password list. Okay, I'm not gonna pretend to understand why it worked that time. I'm just going to accept it. So let's, um, let's run net, because that'll bring this up. I need to bring up app solution. Now this tends to be a little bit iffy if this actually works. Let's 
see if it does. Uh, it's gonna try searching the network for Absolution. The reason why this is iffy is, for whatever reason, the Win server in Samba does not always work correctly with uh, this. I've had, I've had legitimate problems with this. And I am watching. Yeah, it's doing requests on the wire. Oh, well, yeah, no wonder it's not going to work. It's trying to do IPX requests. I, hmm. Just a word of thought. Let me go back to the screen. That ain't going to fly. Because um, Samba doesn't support IPX. I don't think it's ever supported IPX. Uh, so that means I have to edit the protocols. So, transport... I can't remember how you do this. Is there a handy UI for this, or do I actually... Mm, Seb has run out of memory. <laughs> I told you this client was a ram hog. Yeah, it is. Like, I've only got 355 me megabytes of... Uh, kilobytes of conventional memory left. Oh, boy. That is a freaking steamer. Oh, okay. Uh, you can act, I believe you can dynamically all, uh, um, yeah, if I stop, do I get my memory back? I get some memory back, it might be enough. So I want, if I use the basic redirector, uh, just the client, I don't want to log in, and let us, Go, go away, IPX. Normally I like you, but not tonight. And yeah, that's all correct. That's all correct. That's fine. And then it automatically does the free finger salute. And yeah, folks, do feel free to ask me questions. Uh, I love I love interacting with chat, although I do admit sometimes I get a little hyper focused. But um, make yourself known and. If, I, if at any point I am doing something you don't understand, I want to know about it. So the reason I figured out that how to get this working at all is I, I recently had to go through what can be described as seven layers of hell to try and get a video project off the ground. All right, so let's look here. Are you doing anything? Yeah, you're not even trying, are you? If I type slash slash apps. You... Yeah, you're not even seeing that solution. I wonder if I type an IP address in if it would work. So... Uh, 192.168.0.147. Yeah, that doesn't work with this version. I have... Some days I can get this to work. And then some days, it's just not happening. Right, what is going on? Did it actually get an IP address? Oh, wait, wait, it's talking. It's talking. Local master announcement. Or something is talking. So this is Samba just doing its regular announcement. I don't think that's anything related to this. Is this not getting an IP address? Um, there is a way. Let's see here. No diagnostic servers. I'm trying to remember, there is a way to see the, the full setup. So it sees itself on the network, that is correct. Uh, okay, so doing slash help does not work. So diagnostics, config.
Uh, what the heck is it? Everything is fine, this is fine. I yeah, okay, that actually makes sense because I actually believe the stock network driver uses streams and not sockets, that's why there's a separate layer for it. Actually, all things considered, I've got a fair... I, I've got more conventional memory than I normally have, so... I don't think that, but why is this... Actually, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me because it, it's NetBIOS over TCP. Yeah, I, I've. Um, what is your biggest fear in the uh, to program this monstrosity? I've already programmed the worst part of the monstrosity, which is doing the raw sector right, reads and writes. But the next part is actually seeing if I can get the network going before the sun extinguishes or we have a company COVID response. Because uh, at this point, it's an either or. Is this actually trying to do anything? I'm, I'm currently watching it. And I'm sorry I'm not showing Wireshark, but we, we've been there before. Absolution. Definitely trying. So load the midlist driver, load the net line, load God's PCP icon. What's the error 35? It shouldn't matter, but the order might actually matter. Let's remove just just the humor me. Uh oh, insufficient memory. Yeah, it's it's um This is a well fairly notorious Dawes or uh, um memory hog. I don't think I need MS. I don't think I need that, but maybe I do. Let me see here. Does the order change if. Okay, the order does change if I flip these around, so. Just to humor me, I'm just gonna try this. I'm going to just put NetBio support in. And then we'll add TCP IP. I'm not. I don't remember what MSDLC is. Obviously, it's not downloadable content because no one had figured out how to monetize that at this point. So that 
that did net initialize. It actually looks like that did a fair bit, and now it's trying to run net bind. It's not just the network. BIOS. Yeah, it. I hear Wireshark is having some serious problems for. Okay, there we go. Yeah, Wire... Wireshark is having some freezing issues. But if we look here, we can now see it trying to talk on NetBIOS. And we can see it doing what's called wind registration. But it doesn't see it because it's NetBIOS over TCP IP. So. There is a way to get Wireshark to auto scroll. Now I'll just let it restart. And we'll just do a browse. So there's it trying to do the stas query, and it's doing layer three, uh, layer two NetBIOS, which won't fly, but at least it's talking. And we end, all right, so net setup, network configuration. So I do think the order here actually matters. If I can keep the application running long enough to change the order. So if I delete that, and then, under that, we add protocol. No, I wound up the other way. Add protocol. Wow, that utility just just leaks memory, doesn't it? I am really tempted to re-put IPX support back in. Yeah, Nick, uh, Nick Knack, um, I don't blame you, because I'm having that problem. All right, we're just going to have to do the, F, the F7 the f thing so I can actually reconfigure the stupid thing. Reconfigure the thing, the thing, for the thing, the thing. I'm about to just install the Odin stack and be done with it, because this is starting to annoy me. I didn't think the hard part of this project would be getting the blasted... I'm okay. I'm okay. This is fine. We're all fine. Files 30. That's fine. Last try Z. Do not process auto exec. Hey, look, I've got conventional memory again. Uh, let's see here. Does this have anything useful as far as settings go? So we're in any 2000. Uh, we want best performance. And it does that. Uh, remove. Right, you know what? If I just add everything, and I do mean everything, what happens? This is probably a bad idea, but we're going to find out. the driver desk. Next setup. Network configuration. Uh, you know what? Fine. I'm just going to add the other two. So add IPX link. MSDLC. Options are correct. No, you don't need that. Oh, hold on. Is it being that stupid? Well, no, that, that's the correct answer. It is, it's always that stupid. 
Okay, yeah, so apparently it thinks both discs are its OEM driver disc. I, I, I'm not feeling the quality assurance here. Um, uh, Super Beast 189, uh, feel free to um, ask away. I may or may not be able to answer because um, obviously things just hate me right now, but I will be glad to give it a shot. I got that distinct feeling. Oh look, there's there's the IPX frame type right there. All right, let's just see what this abomination does if I actually, let's see, what does it say my setup is? My set, it says my setup is that. Let's just add IPX for total giggles and see what happens. Okay, so that's Samba just doing its normal net BIOS being chatty thing. I should start seeing some IPX traffic here. Yeah, it's doing a layer. It's not doing what I expect it to do, which is unusual. All right, network config. So if I get rid of this, I just tell it to use TCP IP and IPX. Like, did I have this right originally, and for whatever reason it wasn't working? You know, I, I, I realize I, I'm I, I'm living in the future. I've got Wireshark. I remember dealing with this back in the day, and it was just complete ooga booga. And so that time, it didn't do any NetBio stuff. What happens when I run Net and tell it to look around the network? I might need to add IP. So here's it doing uh, Wireshark. Oh, Wireshark's probably having a fit because I am doing capture on the same interface I am doing streaming on. Okay, yeah, that's probably why it's left. So now it's doing, yeah, it's doing IP, it's doing NetBIOS over IPX, which is kind of what I expected it to do. So if I go into Net7, we just in the last one. So... Goodbye, IPX support. What amazes me is I managed to get my actual real-world router to talk IPX. Because we're in the future and backwards compatibility is awesome. Right, let's see what this does. Because I should see now it do TCP IP broadcasts. Although, you know, I just realized I don't think I've ever tried to do this under PCM. That may be why I'm having so much problems. I have a working set for this under Q. I just don't really want to use Q. Let's see it. Yeah, that's interesting. I'm it's either not keeping up or it's not seeing it. Plug this into a tap network and isolate it off. But that shouldn't make a difference. As far as I understand this, which admittedly is not as good as I like to admit. I see the IP, I see Samba. BIOS. Was it NBT was the other one? Uh, or IP source equal 12618.0. What IP address did it get? 180. I think it's IP equal. Alright, now it's gonna rescan the Wireshark file. Yeah, I'm gonna have to move this to a tap interface. I'm going. I've never actually tried the run Wireshark while streaming, 
And obviously, I think that's a bad idea. That actually may be why this whole thing is going boom. The DAWs TCP IP stack may not be able to handle this. Um, there are known problems with that, so let's do a reset. Let's make a new tap uh, tunnel interface. Uh, you know, that's fine. The reason I don't want to do this is that this this quickly gets stupidly complicated very fast. And I really, if I bridge my main Ethernet adapter while I'm online, I will get knocked offline. And then it's bad. Let me think about this for a moment. Technically, slurp networking should be working. Technically. But WINS depends on broadcast traffic working correctly, which is not a guarantee, all things considered. And it is getting a DHCP packet, which means it's got to be talking to the network at least somewhat. So what is going on? So something is going on that I don't completely understand. My guess is there's a problem with the WINS negotiation. Uh, 1260147 guest net. I mean, this worked flawlessly when I, I tried it on real hardware, but I had a dedicated driver for that as well. Oh, guest net. Oh, wait, that actually did something. Oh, did Wireshark, Wireshark, yeah, Wireshark stop, no wonder. Okay. Let's uh, let that run again. Net. Yeah, if Wireshark's not running, I'm not going to see anything. So, as usual, we. so while I figured this out, we are raising money this month, um, raising money for the time being for rain which is the Rape Abuse Inset National Network. Our starting goal is $400, and all our donations are handled by a third party. We do not get your credit card information. If you're on Twitch, scroll down to find the link. Um, and at $400, I get to go suffering heavily. Um, the uh, Rape Abuse uh, Incest National Network is the largest uh, anti-sexual violence organization. It also carries out programs to help prevent sexual violence, help survivors, and make sure perpetrators are brought to justice. So, now that I, um... I still got nothing. I have no idea why this is not working. I, I feel like I should go outside, stand on the fire escape, and go, Ooga booga 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 booga! Because that's how I feel when it comes to my debugging progress thus far. I do have one more thing I can try, but I do, do I really want to go there? Do we really want to go there? All right, before we do anything else, let's, let's get this running on a separate tap interface so I can actually get a better idea of what's going on. So to set a tap interface, uh, tap one, so, I never remember the new command, so let's create a new bridge. And we'll just call it br0. sudo br add if tap 0, br0 tap 0, tap 1. Uh, is this link set tap 1 up? I never. The thing is, I never remember the. And we'll put this on 10, 10, 0, 1, 24. No matter how many times I do this, I never can remember. Uh, set IP address. I think I'd have it. I think I'd have it completely memorized. I have the old IF command. IF commands once. Oh, it's it's link adder. Hold on. Add uh, 10, 
10, 0, 1, 24, dev tap 1. Cool, that worked. Uh, and then sudo link tap 0, set tap 0 up. And now if I go options and we switch to modern bridge, nothing. Set BR0 up. I now go to BR0. Okay, so right now I'm not seeing any traffic there, but that's fine. That's expected. Uh, bridge control. Show bridge. Those are all, those are glued together. So now we just need to reconfigure this for a stack IP. Net setup. And you know, it might even use less memory once I do this. Oh, who am I kidding? It's gonna, it'll probably use even more memory. That's here. What, what range should I give it again? This computer, my desktop. Why well, say tap link is down? Set tap one up. Okay. I had this on the other screen just because, again, let's not play docs and commander. Okay, so that interface is up. Tap zero. Set you to 10, 10. Actually, looking at the syntax, I think it has to go like this 10, 10, 2. Let's see if we, let's see if we get any signs of life out of this thing. Fingers are crossed. If not, I'm going to plan B. Because trying to do tap on... Yeah, see, I'm not even seeing... Oh, wait, hold on. I need to switch you. I just need to switch you from your interface. You are now tap zero. There's now level zero. Oh, and... And it crashed. And it crashed. And I just realized, I'm sorry, I, I haven't had chat up. Let me see what's going on here. Oh, I didn't realize the um, music was too loud. Is that better? Folks, if the audio is really off like that, please let me know. I I did check at the beginning, but as I move around, sometimes the audio levels change. Um, and I, I'm also testing a new boom, so all things are be being balanced. Okay, so this is... Oh, wait, I didn't put this actually on tap zero. Zero, so... No, you're on tap zero. Right, let's do packet capture on tap zero, because this is obviously not capturing anything. If... Every single time, it's just proves being... So instead of trying to write a sector detector or a sector dumper, we've been fiddling with network settings for an hour. This is going well. Are we seeing anything over here? Yeah, we're not seeing bupkis. I am tempted to go to plan B here, which is, well, I'm not sure what plan B is, but I, I'm going to have to come up with one real quick. So let's put this back on my main network. Oh, it didn't crash that time. Oh, there it is. No, it was just waiting. 
Yeah, TDS network settings have definitely not evolved. It's it, it's so it is so what it is, what it is, what it is, what it is, what it is. All right. I'm just trying to think. I don't, you know, I've done this app plenty of times. And I've I've actually had this issue before. But for the life of me, I can't figure out why. So command completed successfully. I'm just... So if I run net... You know, and it's just going to start working to spite me. I, I, I know this. This is how this all works. SNB IPX NetBIOS. Yeah, you're all in PCAP mode. You're in the right settings. I've got Wireshark Wiresharking. We could switch to doing this on real hardware, because I know how to get this working on real hardware. Oh, but I have netware installed on the laptop right now. That's not going to actually work well, because then I'd have to delete netware. It's probably not a bad thing, but it wasn't the plan. See, the other reason I want the network stack to work is it's a lot easier to kick things in and out. Hmm. Okay. Why is this... I... I... See, I have no idea what it's doing at the moment. I, I legit... I got a big old goose egg on understanding what it is trying to do. Go back into setup. So we've got Microsoft TCP IP. Let's add a new driver. It's an NE2000. That's fine. Add protocol. Let me just see. Let me just do a quick Google search. What is... Because there's got... I think... MS Client... TCP IP SMB. Configuring free DOS to access a Samba share. That's exactly what I want. So get the disks. Let's see here. Um, okay, so it says remove protocol SMB link. Then add protocol, TCP IP. It's, it's very specific on how you do this. And then add NetBIOS like that. Network settings are correct. I'm going to go a little crazy if that actually got it working. So that's initializing the network. I should see a DHCP pop up here. It's thinking, yep, there's DHCP. So net use X app solution guest net. Oh, I see net bio stuff. But it's the wrong type of net bios. This is fine. Let's see, NetBIOS. There, there is a little bit more here. Let me just look at this. So this is where you set the groups, you set the commands. Um, Samba restart. You know, just for, just in case Samba is doing something incredibly stupid, let me just restart S Samba. I might have actually turned Samba off now that I think about it. Oh, I, I'm going to kick myself if that's the case. 
Samba is the newest version. SMBD start. PSX SMBD. Okay, and then let's just try doing net view. Yeah, see, it's. Yeah, and then it doesn't find it. Hmm. I mean, technically speaking, what I could implement this client as, because let me let me rip a tab off and bring it over here. So here's how it does the bridging. And then this talks about set your username, set the password. Yeah, so here it is, Microsoft LAN client. Um, spaces. So LAN manager do does adding server. So this is what I was talking about adding server capabilities to the basic client. Um, so let me see here. Here we go. So NetBIOS over TCP IP, because this is what I need. So this is talking about running the Landman client for MS-DOS. I shouldn't need this. I really shouldn't. Because I've gotten this client to work correctly. Let me see here. Let me see here. So here's the land manager client. Um, you know, there is one thing more we can try. No, that won't work. Because if I try installing Windows for work groups, it would, the network stack is only available when Windows is running. And you don't want to dump a hard drive while Windows is running. Yeah, see, because th this is exactly what I need, is right here. I don't think there's a... NetBIOS over TCPI MS Client. Is there a trick to this? NBT. Placed by MBT, can run it on default. Um, <sighs> All right, so what I'm taking away from here is we should just try the land manager client. I'm not really convinced that this is going... Oh, right. That's ftp.microsoft.com. That's gone. That's been gone for a long time. So your DAWs network... Uh, was this the one I was just looking at? Yeah. Right. This is going... This is going well. This is completely... This is completely as planned. All right. So what we've learned here tonight is that the MS client from Microsoft is iffy. I know I've gone to the store before. All right. Let's we're going to pull VirtualBox out. And the reason we're pulling VirtualBox out, because uh, I am not completely crazy about this. Uh, well, let me find a VM.
Because apparently tonight is run a million VMs night. There should be... I should have a driver available for this that works. But I'm just going to... The reason I want to try this is... Is this a problem with bridged networking or is it a problem somewhere else down the line? So if we use VirtualBox and it works, then the problem is with my bridge. So let me bridge adapter here. That's correct. Like that. And this is emulating a Lance network card. I do, I should have a driver for this in my stack of drivers. So let me see here. Choose a, go to a drivers. You know, it's a good thing I made those floppy disks because here's where we're using them. So setup, it's fine. Copy. And we'll uh, let's see here. So here's the giant list of network adapters. Yeah, I forgot there is really a lot of network drivers here. So if I remember correctly how to do this, you can use an ODI one, but it's not what we actually want. So seriously, I'll just rage quit consciousness. Okay. Uh, you're on your own. That's that's what I've learned here. That's fine. We are fine. This is all fine. Um, I'm just looking at my AMD PC Net Drivers Desk. MS Landman DAWs. Drivers. Wow, these are just kind of obnoxious. Um... I've got a packet driver here. See, I don't remember what this actually looks for. Uh, let's, let me see here. Let me put network adapter not shown on list. I am not convinced this is going to work, but we're going to try it. Nothing ventured, nothing gained after all. And then I'm going to tell to look in the three one folder. There it is, PC Net Driver. So N Commander is the username. The options are as follows. I don't care. Uh, TCP IP add protocol net BIOS. Network configuration is correct. Network configuration. Uh, change computer name. Victim two. Okay, let's put the other disc back in. Chat, I'm taking odds on how uh, on this working. Please let me know what you think in chat. MS client. Maybe it's just a broken network driver in the MS client stack. It's possible. Because when I used this on the ThinkPad, I was using a different driver. I was using the Kingston Ethernet driver for that machine. So it is possible that there's something wrong with Microsoft's driver or the way it's in interacting. So I, I don't know. That's why I'm doing this as sort of a sandy check because in theory, both VirtualBox and PCM are using PCAP to punt packets towards each other. Okay, so it, see, it sees the network card. That's actually a good sign. Okay. And it ran out of memory. Why did it run out of memory? Are you telling me that the fact that... Is my CD-ROM driver eating up a little bit too much memory? Oh, no, I don't have high mem installed. That, that's why. I, uh, I was using running some really cruddy software in this VM, so I actually had to take high mem out of this. So no wonder so there's no memory. Okay. So let's... Uh, well, yeah, Wireshark is kind of melting here.
There's not enough memory available. How? What else can I free up? What is it? Let's see your last drive. Okay, we'll uh, we'll lose the CD-ROM driver. I don't need it. Yeah, there ain't much left here I can jettison. I might have to run MemMaker on this. Yeah, the bloat is in fact real. And I I'm guessing part of it is because the PC net driver is a big giant pile of doo-doo. It's meant for Windows, uh, Windows for work groups, which means it's probably meant to use virtual memory. Hey, that's something. Create password file. It's trying to do something. Wireshark is completely locked up. Wireshark is officially quit. I'm going to kill nine it. Oh, look at that. Absolution server, Samba, Ubuntu. Holy cow, it worked. Uh, yeah, I want to connect. And that's my Samba, that's my, uh, my, that's my dump folder. So that means... Okay, so that does mean that the MS client works correctly with Samba. At least when you modify Samba correctly. But that means that there's a problem with the PCMs. Either with PCMs, Novell, any 2000 emulation. I can't use 86 box for complicated reasons, but the short version is its network stack has some serious glitches. So it also could be a problem with the MS clients, any 2000 driver, because I have used the Novell Netware NE2000, and NE2000 is not is a de facto standard, not an actual standard. It's just all clones of Novell's actual line of network cards. So I don't actually know if that's a bug or not. I, I legit don't know what to take away from. How much memory do I have left here? I don't have a lot of conventional memory left. I have... God, that is a whopping... 300 left. That is bloated. That is legit bloat. I am feeling the bloat. All right, folks, I'm going to just take a leak. So I am going to be BRB. Um, let's take, we're going to take a five minute break. Let me get the splash screen up. Um, uh, that's no, sorry. That's the off air one. I need the other one. I need the I'm away from keyboard one. Nope, it's not that one. There we go. All right, folks. Um, and let me let me punch you back on my other desktop so I can actually see that. I I am going to go step away from keyboard for about a few minutes. Talk amongst yourselves, and we will finally start doing developing things when I get back. <laughs>
Okay, chat. I am back. And I am still a little flabbergasted about this. That is a lot of conventional memory. A 300 megabyte, a kilobytes? God, it, we live in the era where 300 megabytes is not an absurd amount of memory. It's got to be a problem. Knickknack, uh, thank you for the $10 donation to Rain. It is hugely appreciated. I'm just, I'm just sitting here a little flabbergasted. I'm, I'm, chat, I want your opinion. Do you want me to investigate this a little further, or do you just want me to get on with the programming? Because what I could do is I could load the novel odin stack and then see if i can run ms client on top of that granted i'm pretty sure that will be um let's just say undo unfortunate things to my memory or we can continue with the programming my webcam is not on it was on hold on i gotta check the phone why has my camera decided to say Oh, because apparently my phone ran out of memory, too. There it goes. Apparently, I ran out of memory so hard that the phone ran out of memory and the app crashed. I'm, I'm really zoomed out. How long has that been off? So, okay. Chad, did we come to any conclusion of how deep we want to go down the rabbit hole? Yeah, it's old bloat influencing new bloat. I won't even deny that one. It's possible. See, what my actual thought about this is you know let me let's let me mount this the um let me give an explanation of what i did and why i do think that there may be a more serious problem here so pc bot virtual box normal by default emulates a pc net 3 pci card it's a pretty ancient card but it's well supported so normally on this machine you use what are called nightless drivers uh Version 2 for DAWs and version 3 for Windows for Workgroups, which, and also Windows 95. So, that that's the DAWs one. That's a Landman driver, but it should work. I use the Windows for Workgroups 3.01, which is exactly the same size. So, there's no actual difference between the two. So, it's just a bloated driver. Which is really kind of frustrating. There's no actual... There would be no actual way to use this driver with a more modern system. If you use the ODI stack, that's uh, Novell's, it probably uses a lot less memory because TCP IP is known to be kind of a hog under MS Client. But I mean, that's still obnoxiously bad, all things considered. I mean, because that... I can't even run the setup program. See, and my concern with this... Let, let me... So, let, let me... Let's, we're going to go back to sort of full circle here. So, what I was going to use was I would use Watt TCP or MTCP to actually do the programming. And these work... Um, these basically work, um, brain, uh, with a packet driver. And the packet driver is what makes it go. I wasn't planning, I'm going to, I'm going to stress this. I wasn't planning on doing development on DAWs in DAWs. Because I actually don't have a good text editor I like, aside from Microsoft's programmer's workbench. And it's hard to use an extender with that. Let me see here. If I go to his developer form, 
So go to Watt TCP. See, ideally, I would have a something that could work with both the MS client and also work with the Odin driver, because that means basically anything of a network card, I could suck data out. And holy cow, that is a Yahoo groups. When was the last time this was, um, that was a while ago. Let's see here. And that's gone. See, and then, you know, that just things make things a little bit more annoying. A lot of like the free Dodge resources are disappearing. I think that was why I was going to use MTCP is because I could actually find, find it. So let's see here. So packet drivers. Yeah. See here, this is what it talks about. If you have a package driver, you could use a Nidless or ODI one to convert and it requires more memory. The reason the, way, the the reason for this is that networking support under DAWs was never completely standardized. It was kind of a. I just realized I lost my background audio. Hold on. Um, pretzel, where'd you go? The reason it was never standardized was mostly because by time networking really became prevalent. It was basically netware or bust, and then we had Windows. So it was always kind of a hodgepodge, and not everything worked all that well. So if we go here... If I can find a packet driver for... Yeah, see... Here's a list of all the different TCP. Wow, Trumpet for Dawes. Who remembers Trumpet Windsock? Woohoo! That. Man, I just felt old because I remember Trumpet. Yeah, I have the distinct feeling I've just been on a fool's errand for the last hour. Let's let's go for software packet. Okay, there are no software packet drivers. Um, yeah, see, because it sends you here, and this website doesn't exist. Does the Wayback Machine have this website? Wayback is really hit or miss with these things, though. Let's let's see if it has it. Well, it looks like it only went offline recently. Let's see what it said in February. Oh, well, it was up in February. Let's see here. Any 2000 uh, packet driver. Dogs. See, I always hate these driver websites. I really, really do. Packet driver skeleton, signer software, yada, yada, yada. Because I was originally going to do this as a... So let me give you an idea, the, the stream of what the original plan was. It was. Originally, I was going to cross-compile from Linux to DAWs, because I already have OpenWatcom installed. I was going to use the packet driver from MS Client to put data back and forth, but with that little conventional memory, I'm not going to get anywhere because Microsoft, as far as I know, Microsoft never actually published the TCP IP shell stuff publicly because if you look here, the TCP IP stack for most free DAW software is built into the application. It doesn't use a system one. Like here it shows Netware Shell, or a protocol stack, and then IPXPD, yada, yada, yada. Um, so.
I mean, we could still do that. I could use a floppy disk as an intermediary. It's just ugly. You know what? I've got a packet driver for VirtualBox. We're just going to use that. We're going to use that, and we're going to use a floppy disk to pop, punt the files over. This is... I, I, I realize that what I've been doing is very over the top. And we don't need to do this. So we're not going to do this. So autoexec.bat. Uh, and from hell's heart, I stab at thee. I think it put anything in config.sys. Well, it did. Uh, yeah, get lost. We'll reinstall this. Now that I know at least it works and I'm not going completely mad, I'm actually happy. Let's see how much conventional memory we have after all that. We've got 619, yeah. Okay. So be it. So we do have a packet driver on this, and the packet driver API should more or less be the same. So packet driver, um, blah, blah, blah. PCN, PK, like that. Oh, interesting, the, uh, the, this was a driver disk from AMD, and apparently it uses the skeleton from Crynair. That's that website that's currently down. So how do I install it? Okay. I feel like I have fallen down the rabbit hole here. Yeah, so it looks like they're all based off the same packet skeleton. Let me... Sorry. Oh, you know what? I just realized I lost chat somewhere along the way. Hmm. So... I remember Trumpet. Yeah, well, it wasn't that Trump. There, there, there was a time where Trumpet did not have negative connotations. I know that was a long time ago, but... Let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Packet driver for MS DOS. Rip off this tab, bring it over here. Oh, wow, a Banyan. So that's Novell Packet Driver. What is this? That's a Banyan thing. Sorry, I see Banyan, I click. Right, so it's an NE2000 compatible driver. Okay, that's fine. So here's packet driver that text. So apparently there was a generic, generic one. I'm getting a giant headache from this. I'm going around in circles and nothing. All right, so this is NWPD. We're going to grab that. Um, Serve retro drivers. All right, let's. Uh, we're going to mount one of these disks. So let's. We'll use the mini port now. Nah. Um, any client drivers, let's call this, uh, any 2000 packet. Because I, I, I just need to resolve this. I'm going to go mad if I don't. So then we need to loop mount it. You know, I just realized that's going to clip. Bring that over there. Any 2000 packet. Mount. Mount. 
Okay, grab those. And then that over there. Okay, so now that I got that all sorted, let's bring back VirtualBox. Let's check that. that. From Hell's, I, I cast this all out. We're just gonna try the packet driver and then we're just gonna compile the Hello World application. And we'll see if this works with no, like virtually no conventional memory. Because if this works, I'm gonna scream and then I'll be okay. All right, folks, taking odds, I'm going to just break down crying here in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. What the heck are... Uh, side pocket, if you're there, that looks like... Uh, we've got spam in the chat. Uh, blah, blah, blah. So we just did the reboot. Yeah, this is, uh, we're, I, I, I think there's going to be tears here. So, A. Okay, so copy nepw.com to... NEPW. Interesting that it asked for the interrupt number. We pull up the the document for this again, which is here. So normally, it looks like it normally loads at interrupt sixty, three hundred three. So let's let's just try that. So OX sixty three OX three hundred. Okay, so it didn't see the card, or it doesn't like the card that's there. <sighs> Why is this having... No, 300. Did I do it backwards? 303. No, that is correct. Let's see here. Three... OX sixty-three. Okay, so apparently that one does not work. Let me see if I can find a different packet driver. Please tell me this is a mirror of what should be that giant collection of drivers. Oh, that's promising. That is actually really promising. Uh, let's grab any two and any two thousand, and then sudo downloads any two thousand mount. I know this is usually a bad idea because I didn't actually unmount the floppy disk. Did okay? No, I'm going to eject. And then load. Ah. Checked. Sudo unmount mount. Yeah, now you can start to see why I kind of wanted to have multiple things. Because I like having source control and stuff. But yeah, it's that's kind of where we're going with this. I mean, if I really, really wanted to go all crazy, I'd install Among Us. Well, I shouldn't say install. We, I'd just start putting Among Us, and I'd let chat listen. Okay, so NE2000, OX60, packet uh, int level is 3, OX300. And it found it. 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 End commander might be stuck in an infinite loop. I'm 
okay. This is okay. Everything is fine. This is fine. I'm I, I, I'm just going to go to GitHub. I'm going to grab MTCP. Okay. So that's also slightly annoying. BIOS. So it can be built under DAWs. Can I, I, is there no way to cross compile this? Oh, I might actually have to do my development under DAWs. I was resisting doing this. Here's the home page. Apparently the home page does not load up correctly. See, when I had looked at this, okay, here it is, um, MTCP. So here's the source, because the way you do this is you basically download this as one giant set, and then you put your source code in here as an application, and then you compile. So here's the developer's documentation. So how do I actually compile this? So uses Wacom. So there should be make files here somewhere. If I go into say, ah, here's a make file. Now from what I remember, wlink actually will fix most of this on the fly. So let's just try grabbing the source code here. And folks, uh, do tell me if this is too small to see on camera. So let's just grab the source code here. Source, punch you over here. Okay, that's there. Um, Wacom should be chilling over here. Wacom and then C. Do I have it? Okay, yeah. Now it's on the path. Let's see here. Let's uh, let's try and build the Telnet one because. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Okay. So there are some DAWs hard-coded thingamajiggies here. Probably because I'm the only one who ever uses Linux. Um, let's see here. Yeah, okay. So if we just change this to use RM. Ideally, I could make this more generic, but... Yeah. Okay, let's just try that and see what happens. I have my doubts. Yeah, because RM, RM gets converted, but then it starts complaining. Packet that object does not exist and cannot be made from any existing. So where is packet? I'm gonna have to actually do a fair bit of effort to make this build, aren't I? Uh, right now, I wanna try and see if I can get this to compile. Okay, so all the files are in the wrong case because of course they are. Because of course they are. Okay. 
I'm not giving up. Not that easily. So, normally with the MTCP, from what I remember, is you run the DHCP thing and then it writes the config file out for the other applications. I believe that's how this works. Check cabling packet settings. Initializes the stack. Oh yeah, did I mention that this stack uses C++? It is not standard system five. Yeah, so, okay, that works exactly the way I thought it was. Um, thank you, Jack. Uh, does that work recursively, Jack? Because if that works recursively, that would be really useful. I would still have to fix the make file, but it would be a lot less pain. Let's see here. Recursive rename files lower. Oh, yeah. Or, well, I found the answer on uh, Stack Overflow before the future caught up with me. All right. Let's 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 do this. I, I, I am not... I... I um... up on his shelf food tonight no that was actually me uh well okay um we are we are both up on our shelf food but our shelf food no seem to be worky okay so why is it the shell why is shelf food not happening the effect i want um let's see here. okay that's doing it Surprisingly slow, but it, it is doing it. Alright. Um, it did it for the files. It didn't do it for the directories. I mean, that's... I can work with that. I can work with this. Apps. Apps. Include. Include. TCP ink, TCP ink. That isn't right. I don't think there's. I don't know. It didn't even work. That's depressing. Yeah, see, if it actually worked, it would be one thing, but it didn't actually work. Uh, side pocket, can you? I need the ban hammer. We need to get the spam out chat. Let's see here. Oh, oh, I see. It's got use. It's using rename slash n because. God, I, I could just imagine a cataclysmic mistake of the person that tried running that in the root directory. All right. Okay. So that means the only thing I should have to do. Let's let's go back to this. W make make file. So it says packet object does not exist. I have to flip the pa the these things the other way. And I will post this on GitHub for anyone else who wants to share in my suffering. You know, sometimes I do think I'd be better off if I just used Windows because, you know, things would work. But even I have a limit of how far I'm willing to suffer. Who knew? But it does. Ex it, it, that was in fact a thing. Oh, 
Okay, now it's actually trying to build. That is progress. That is, in fact, actual progress. Because that's Wacom trying to build... Um, it's not really happy, but it is trying to build. So let's see here. Processing command switch. So that's a invalid include directive. Which probably is just let's see here, 40. What line was it? 43. Oh, I see. Okay. So it's depending on the preprocessor to switch that. I need to. This needs to be escaped. I'm surprised that works, even under Windows. Um, okay. Telnet. Let's see here. So, change that like that. Let's see if we can build it. And then we start running into more issues. Am I just going to have to set up a Windows environment because, um... Holy cow, your paths suck. I mean, I've dealt with this with other projects, but this is just obnoxious. Oh, okay, so object cannot be made from any files. Oh, um... That's understandable because packet Wa open Wacom has a very strange behavior that depending on the platform it's running on it it changes how it makes its object files. And I, I've never understood the why it does this because it really shouldn't. Because see I have packet O here, but it shouldn't be that. It should be packet object. Yeah, because it builds all those targets, and then it just goes kaflooey. Let's see here. Open Wacom, suffix, Linux. Is there a way we can actually um, change that? Oh. Let's see here. Ah, here it is. Okay, so you can change it by using the FO option. Oh, that, that just feels appropriate. To force the correct suffix. Now we're getting somewhere. We're actually starting to build stuff. So now, TCP Inc. Where did we... Fail. We are failing on 62. Now we just keep going playing whack, um, whack a bug until we actually get there. Okay. See, I don't even know how I'd commit this from the. See. So close. We are almost there. We are approaching ascension, people. Ooh. Okay, we're at... It's getting closer. Um... 
The object, okay, so it's an assembly file. It's it's having complaints about. Let's see if we can find. Yeah, okay, so here's where it's doing running uh, WASM. Directive error near uh, uh, DNS.obj. Oh, I like that. BS image. Not actually useful, but it is BS. So why is it a BS image? I Is there anything special about it? No, not really. Uh, maybe something bad got built at some point? I don't know. Let's just blow away all the object files and try again. No, it's, it's still not liking it. So those are all the object files it just built. And it doesn't seem to like the DNS one. Uh, if I put... So when I, so I do have a bunch of source code that uses uh, Open Wacom, but obviously the way I do it, it's a little bit different. So that's the W link. It links for DAWs, eliminates, blah 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 blah. If I pull up my serial dumper, which is kind of my, I left myself notes because W link is a strange beast, and we're going to need code from this anyway, so I might as well pull it up. So how did I do this here? So here with wlink, I link each object file separately. Which obviously ain't ideal, but it does work. Oh, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. This is being treated... I gotta do an escape there, don't I? I think it's a difference in how... Windows... So, the port of Open Wacom to Linux is not what I call the... Most brilliant thing to ever walk upon the world. The reason for this is that Open Wacom started life on DAWs. It was used extensively on OS2 and on Windows NT as a cross compiler. So it has a lot of Windowisms hard baked into it. So if we look at this. Yeah, so the way this handles it is it uses a comma between all um, each file. I did it in a different one by using multiple files. Um, so if I do w link, w make, can I find a decent example of this? See, like this example. Let's see here. This one actually uses a macro. Multiple objects in one file statement. You just have to group them in a... Is that really all you have to do? So if I do that... Because if we can just get this basic Telnet daemon to work... Oh! Oh! Folks, that's telnet.exe. That is telnet.exe. That is telnet.exe. Let me see if I can build the DHCP. Well, we still need the DHCP client, although I guess I could just download the binary release. Yeah, we can just grab the standard binaries because I don't actually, 
that was more the test to see if I could get the build environment to work. So let's grab the standard binaries and we're going to test them. Um, yeah, you know what? We can try and build DHCP. You know that that we can actually do that. Because now we know what to do. I think all we have to do is just fix some paths. But see, I, I'm just right now debating is how are we going to put this into source control? Um, also, it's running this patch thing, which concerns me. Oh, no, that's just a C file. Okay, that's that's not a big deal. So let's fix, so include TCP lib, TCP in, and the other one we need to force the output object file. There's a WASM thing, we're going to need that too. I gotta find if there's a more generic way to do this. I'm sorry, my brain's a little bit fudged after all that. So let's see here. Can we actually build DHCP.exe? Uh, tries. Um, Helps when your backslashes are going the right way. What's funny is that the other slash direction actually works under Windows. And then I need to escape here. And then we just have to fix that. Because again, it's right now it's just all case issues. You know, I would pay money for a preprocessor option that would handle that. But we are making progress. Okay, so that that was the same error we got last time. Uh, there it is, the WASM line. Curly brace. Oh, I'm missing curly brace. Nice! That is an MS DOS executable. Okay. Alright. Let's get this put on the floppy disk and let's test that. DHCP.exe mount. Uh, what did I do with that floppy disk? Okay, so sudo cp dhcp exe. Let's make a new folder called tools. sudo uh, sudo cp dhcp dot exe tools. And then let's grab the telnet binary. Okay. So now let's put the disk in. Uh, unmount it. Yeah, I already unmounted it. All right, folks. Moment of truth here. Is it going to work? So DHCP. Okay, so it needs a mtcp config c mtcp config config. I can do that. DHCP. Okay, I guess my file needs to exist. Well, we can we can do that. Um, all right, so let's just figure out how to configure this thing. So obviously a little bit of configuration is needed. It's not just grab and go. 
So MTCP config. <sighs> DAWs MTCP config file. Okay, so I guess, oh, here's a sample one. All right, um, so what we need in this file is as such, because we, we use the interrupt to set it. So, so it would be packet int OX60, hostname DAWs. Let's just see if that's enough. Oh, it's sending DHCP, it got a lease. It's talking. It's talking. Let's see if we can tell that something. Um, hard fought. Nope, hard fought. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, that won't work. Let me try nethack.alt.org. I think that's still telnet. Oh! Um, I can play NetHack. Ha, oh, look at that. I'm actually playing NetHack on hack, um, uh, alt.org. It is working, although it's a little, what is with it? Oh, that's, that is weird. It's not using the standard keybind. It's using the numeric keypad. Probably because it's how it's um, navigating, but that's... Actually, we should be able to turn deck graphics on now that I think about it. Let, let me see here. Can we actually do that? It may not let us because this is still technically... The game is running on Linux on... Um... Okay. Regardless, it's working. That was what I needed to test. I probably shouldn't have quit there, but I needed the test. I'm a little concerned that it says that heap is corrupted. But the takeaway here is we have a working client. So let's let's do let's let's do a little bit of cleanup work here. Because of the way this SDK works. I don't have anything I can fork from, and he doesn't keep the files in GitHub, as far as I can tell. Yeah. He basically, the author of this just provides this download. So I'm just going to commit this as a new repository and put it on GitHub. Uh, so let's call this MTCP from Linux. Uh, MTCP modified and hacked up to build from Linux plus some other utilities. Um, I can never remember. Is it hyphens or underscores is the good git practice? Uh, I guess it's hyphens. Create repository. Get int. Um, find name object arm args. Goodbye. Uh, get int. Let's add a git ignore file. Get add. All right, there we go. Uh, origin. Oh, uh, I need to change the branch name. How do you rename the branch and get? Uh, 
Uh, oh, that's easy enough. Get checkout. Oh, sorry, get branch M main. Get push set upstream origin main. Cool. And there we have it. All right, we can now build TCP IP applications from DOS. That was way more effort than I thought it would be. I'll be honest. Um, granted, I probably made this a lot harder on myself by going around in rabbit holes, but, well, I have no excuse. That's kind of what it boils down to. So, well, a lot of it mostly came down to the fact that I got rabbit holed it rabbit hole with trying to use um oh sorry my leg fell asleep um rabbit hole trying to use ms client um and my thinking there wasn't wrong but it wasn't right either now if we look at my cereal i hold on i need to get a drink there hydration is needed I didn't have to compile the Borland C. I actually have Borland C on floppy disks hanging around. Uh, it's in my shoebox behind me. I, I I can't see it right now. So um, we could do the Borland C. Oh my God, kill me! Um, but I actually need a working TCP/IP stack. I am still hoping. Yeah, we kind of are talking about the real world struggles of '90s hackers. But, you know, the, the counter argument here is that we're in real mode, we're in DAWs, we have nearly the full source code to our TCP IP stack. We can do unspeakable things so we can. I mean, I know we've got Linux and Linux is awesome, but no, if you really hate me, you would make me use high C, which really should only ever be used while under the influence of something because it is an atrociously bad compiler. Uh, high as in I, um, with a GH at the end. Uh, I also think it's called Mechworks C. It's part of what became Code Warrior. Slimmer edition. Yeah, well, the thing is that there's a difference of saying I'm high while coding C and I'm coding on high C. So... Yeah. Um, so anyway, I was talking about this. So this is my little abomination of, from God. Is to basically read a sector from a hard drive, sector by sector, and then write it out over X modem. And it's actually not that bad. It's not that great. But um, there is actually an, an API in OpenWatcom to do to send BIOS reset commands or uh, sorry, BIOS disk commands directly, so I didn't have to do this in assembly. Um, like if we find it, like we have BIO disk disk read. Um, I actually think this may be part of the DAWs API itself directly, but when you go all the way down, and I, I do mean like like through six different files, it does go to int thirteen which means it should work with anything that can start in real mode because int 13 is real mode BIOS DAWs sector read writes. Now, when I did this, used uh, a serial port to dump a hard drive, it was really slow. I, I And I mean slower than it should have been. I think it took four days to do one gigabyte over uh, serial. When normally when I do X modem, I can send about a hundred megabytes in about two hours. So I don't know if that's a problem with the disk read or write. I mean, obviously it's not cached, but this should be bottlenecking on the UART and not on the, um, 
Words, fail me. Um, it should be bottlenecking on the UR and not on the disc, even if it's only reading one sector at a time, which I believe is what I did. I only read one sector at a time because segments suck. No, I actually send 16 sectors at a time. So I'm sending eight kilobyte frames, which I think was due to some limitation in X modem, if I remember correctly. So the, the long and short of this here is um, it worked. I just don't know why it was so slow. So if we take this code, because the way it works, and there is some assembly in here, um, if we have this function called get disk geometry and it basically it um it hugs in 13 and does a read for the disk geometry and i'll tell you that the disk geometry stuff is kind of special uh from what i remember you have to do some weird thing yeah here it is you have to uh do a lot of rotations to get the number to be where it should be like here i had to move everything to the low and then exchange it to put it in the right place because, um, yeah. I know this is all correct because I've examined the BIOS geometry with a hex header on correct machines. I've checked it with Linux. So I know this implementation is correct, even if it's a little iffy. I could not find a good implementation of X modem in C. Not something I could embed into a different application. So I don't know what was going on with that. Um, or sorry, Z modem. Uh, because Z modem actually is a very complicated beast. Um, and I just couldn't find an easy thing I could rip out and put into something else. Because the I didn't write this X modem uh, implementation. I found it on the internet. But basically it takes, uh, it just basically gives you a function and then you do you write it where it needs to go. It it was about as dead simple stupid as it gets. Uh, and the only other thing is I also had this driver I found on the internet. Um, the standard PC BIOS does have an interface for um, yeah. I looked at IRZSC and it was not trivial to pull the 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 stack out of it here i'll actually pull it up because it that source code base is a bit surprising to be honest and we'll, we'll load it up in micro micro squish i mean you look at it and the Z modem stuff is not self-contained. It, it basically references all sorts of things all over here. Like here's the entire protocol handling. Um, yeah. I mean, I could have gone it to work, but Z modem is more useful over modem lines where packet loss is a problem. Um, X modem is fine on point to point serial lines. Yeah, it's actually not as bad as I remember it being. I remember this being actually fairly gnarly. Um, although I find it interesting that they have a file called BOS run piped, which makes me wonder why that needs to exist. Why modem doesn't tolerate any sort of line noise. And my experience is that USB to serial adapters are garbage. Um, so X modem, basically the nice thing about X modem is it sends a frame, it sends a CRC and if the CRC doesn't match, it resends that frame. It, it's about as simple as you can get without trusting the gods of flow control. Z modem is actually a fairly smart protocol. It automatically determines the best buffer size. It automatically does resend, resume. It, it's basically the kitchen sink of wire transfer protocols. Uh, although I actually tend to prefer Kermit myself, but um, Z, Z modem is actually very useful. It's also not well supported. Uh, like U-Boot has no support for Z modem. I, and for things like uh, Motorola bugs and other um, BSP monitors that basically take a firmware image or a serial. I have never seen anything use X modem and I've used a lot of those devices. 
Most of them will take only use Z modem and a few would do Y modem. So, yeah. That is refreshing. So, what do we want to do now? I'm just current. I'm currently just thinking here for a bit. I definitely want to continue doing the coding. Uh, I just need a moment to get my brain back into gear. Um, I used to use Z modem a lot myself. In fact, I still do because it's a pretty convenient way to go from point to point. And my favorite terminal software for DAWs, which is Procom Plus, has support for it and about 30 other transfer protocols. But yeah, basically Z modem rocks. Let's just put it like that. It just kind of sucks to embed it into anything. Oh man, I miss Procom. Jack is going down memory lane. Be careful, Jack. You go far enough back and um, I don't know what you'll find, but I don't want to pay for the therapy. So um, it's that time. of it, It's the... Holy cow, it's already 1030. Um, so DEFCON 201 is currently raising money for the Rape Abuse Incident National Network, or RAIN. Um, we are currently trying to raise $400. Uh, we currently... I think we're what? Hold on, where's the overlay? Where's my overlay? Uh, we have currently raised thirty dollars of our of our four hundred percent goal, so that's about nine percent. Um, the, ooh, excuse me. Okay, I'm good. The Rain Network is helps survivors of sexual abuse, and um. We, it would obviously end commander is starting to run out of conventional memory in his own brain because he can't seem to finish a sentence um if you want to invoke it if you want to invoke your debugger on your local end commander press f in chat now um because god knows i've been calling him around enough debuggers the last week <sighs> oh man thanks jack yeah, I um, I cracked the copy protection on Banyan Vines, and God, let me tell you, there was some indigestion there, and I think I was dealing, I was recovering from the indigestion from the last time. So, yeah, all right. Look, we're not going to get anywhere if I'm just staring at the damn code. So you know what? Let's. Let's uh let's get to it. So there is a sample here. So let's look at the sample. What does the sample do? So it looks like the sample is Does it do anything? I guess it does do something. All right. So I guess we'll start with the sample and then we'll work from there. So first thing we want to do is we want to get that sample to compile. Because I don't give up that easily. I probably should, but I don't. So first, let's fix the make file. I mean, Jack's right. I could just, you know, what? I can just do a find replace here because it's it's one file. Boink, boink, like that. TCP ink, TCP lib, include, and then fo zero, obj. Add that here. Because uh, fortunately, we've already done the hard part. Let's create a terminal. Oh. OK. 
Okay, sample.exe. So, okay, so we fixed that. Yeah. As expected, there's some things we gotta fix. So basically, it loads like a giant global config. So, like, you can turn tracing on and off, various options. Because the TCP IP stack is built into each individual app. It's not a global thing. So, I mean, this is a pretty good learning tool. And actually, in some ways, I actually think something like this is more useful for learning a system than something like a Raspberry Pi. Because while I think the Raspberry Pis are awesome, please don't get me wrong, the problem I have with the Pi is that in it's no different than Linux or Windows on x86 because you don't really learn all that much from it at least as far as lower hardware now if you want to do stuff like build GPI gpio devices uh it rocks but also adreno works maybe i'm just not the right market for the the pi i mean i use it as a tiny computer but um fix get ignore make sample build better all right so now we got that building so if we look at sample yeah so you can see it does bios we have control c control break handlers um does interestingly tends to use control break over control c although they're both kind of both supported except not uh they're both handled by interops as you can see here so this is where we initialize the tcp ip stack now annoyingly wacom c is technically a c++ compiler it's a c++ compiler that is feature equivalent to visual c++ sex so don't expect any modern niceties in in this this is when c++ was really gnarly not that C++ has really gotten all that much better, but you see what it is. And I, I'm not completely sure why they wouldn't just use a standard postfix, uh, uh, postfix, or sorry, Berkeley sockets. <sighs> Actually, no, I can think of why you would do that because Berkeley sockets depends around using select and implementing select on DAWs is I'm not going to say impossible, but it's pretty damn close to it because select really depends on something managing the IO. Uh, and without select, Berkeley sockets kind of sucks. And that, that's putting it mildly. Not that select is ideal for performance, but for simple applications, it's fine. Because you can definitely see how it's based upon, um, like, if you look here, listen is non-blocking you see it's actually doing things like processing arp and processing tcp ip packets so it actually makes sense on why they didn't derive this from berkeley c or the berkeley um driver i'm pretty sure the microsoft ms client stuff or the novell tcp ip.exe they probably all do that because those are terminate and stay resident but we also saw what it does to memory So, today we learned. So, how does the sample work? So, it looks like the sample just listens. If I want to dial someone, okay, so that that's easy enough. So, yes, yeah, so this is where the usage gets printed out. This is where the blada blada, the blada blada, the blada blada. Here tonight on the blada blada, the blah 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 blah. I think I'm going a little bit crazy, and in, in the ha 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 sort of way. Is this a HTTP client? It is an HTTP client. Well, that's actually kind of useful. I will admit that I'm kind of tired. 
We can keep going for a bit longer, but I am tempted to put this up for now and come back to it later. Despite the fact we ended up futzing around with basically um, the network client for so many hours. Um, I'm actually going to call this progress because we've understood what will and won't work. We know that we can use an adapter to convert an Odin driver or a Nidlis driver to the standard DOS packet. At, at granted, the cost of more memory, but um, that's assuming we don't have a packet driver. And there's a lot of packet drivers on that site we found. Actually, I should probably mirror that entire collection. Nope, that isn't it. Where was that? Um, we should probably mirror that entire collection. What was it? Pack driver. So there's a whole lot of them here. Well, uh, maybe a whole lot is the wrong word. Ooh. Ow. <sighs> yeah, so these are a bunch of... Um, ...ones, but I thought the one where we found this driver was had a lot more. Like, yeah, here we go. Manifest. Primarily because I thought this had all those old ISA ones. And it's at Columbia, of all places. Is this Columbia as in Columbia University? I mean, I, I'd have to think it's an IDE or an EDU. Yeah, that's Columbia University. Why does Columbia University... And it has a nice collection of PC fonts as well. Kermit, I understand. Didn't Kermit originally come from Columbia? Or was that a different... Uh, was that a different... No, it did come from Columbia University. Okay, so that one makes sense. What's the other ones? I mean, when was the last time you started... You were browsing a public FTP server? Yeah, you know what? I think I want to dump this because that's a lot of old packet drivers. And these things have a tendency to go poof. Uh, let me see here. Is NCP is still in the archive? Yeah, I think what we're going to do is we're going to end tonight with a little bit of software archiving. I want, I want to grab this entire folder. So let's go to my archive folder. Uh, let's call this Columbia Packet Driver Dump. And then Columbia Packet Driver Dump. NCP Columbia.edu. Let's see here. Yeah, wow. I, I, I literally feel like this is like ancient like this feels like a forgotten ftp server oh interesting i have a few more files in here because i i now see when i do an a cd command i see a dev a pub and a user folder um i want to i want to disagree with you but the simple fact of the matter it well Okay, so you are correct. FTP servers are a freaking dinosaur. They actually predate TCP IP. Okay, all right, that's downloading. We're going. To, we're just going to grab the whole stack of these. Um, they actually go back to ARPANET, and ARPANET, before it used TCP IP, used what's called the Network Control Protocol, or NCP. And NCP is a half-duplex protocol. That's why it is so flippin' strange compared to everything else. Oh, look, there's source code. 
That's source code. Oh, we're, we're going to have to look at that. Hold on, hold on. All right, so we just grabbed that. I do love NFCP. I've, I've used it. I used to be a Mac user, and it used to be in the default install of Mac OS. I'm assuming it's gone now because uh, Apple hates its users. But... Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So... Uh, hey, oh, Sa uh, Sai Cole. Yep. If your your name on my admin chat is black on dark blue, so it was a little hard to read. Um, I always find it, I always explain a concept uh, that chat brings up because there's always going to be someone who doesn't know. So, holy cow, look at that. What are the, what did I find here? That's a lot of old source code. Turbo C driver for FTP software's packet driver interface. Hoo hoo! I feel like I've dug up the dead. Is there a license on this? Because if this is legitimately in the public light domain, like all of this, which it may be, I think it is. Holy cow! GPL v1 When the hell what did you see a GPL v1 chat I'm sorry that's going on Twitter That that is a legit GPL v1 and it doesn't have a an and or later clause What did, what was the difference between GPL v1 and GPL v2? I have never run into... I mean, I knew v1 existed. What it probably was is it was probably put under GPL v1 in 1988. That's the same year I was born. But let's see here. Let's, let's look at the versions. Let's, let, let's go to Wikipedia. Version 1 of the GPL was released February 1989. And then version 2 was 1991. It, it is a year. It's it's a, it's as old as I am. I'm taking a screenshot. Sorry, this has got to go on Twitter. Because when the heck do you ever find this? We're, we're, we're doing some software archiving here because this sort of stuff gets lost. Let's grab this. And uh, let's go put this on the old Twitter. So, as it turns out, I not only do retro computing, but apparently I also do retro software licensing. When was the last time you saw a GPL v1 um, licensed piece of software? Um, and let me just add, as seen on Hack, Alt, and Commander. I'm actually curious what people are going to tell me about that. So, well, the, the, um, I'm not sure if I responded. So 1993 might be when it was fixed, but, or it could have been originally based off this driver and then changed. Let's, let me, let's do a license. Let's look here. So if we go look here in source, public, um, Here. License as oh. there's probably a smarter way to do this, but okay. So 66 files are licensed as 
So about half the files here. Yeah, so about half the files are licensed like that. Like if we look at this win packet, because this lets you, we saw this binary earlier, this win packet. Oh yeah, no, this one's also GPL v1. So what is not, you know, that, cause I'm actually curious, like the ones that aren't. So Vaxmate, Trace, Tiara doesn't, isn't licensed like that. Tiara. I am not seeing a license on this one. But man, look at that. Oh wow, that's a micro channel card. Yeah, I feel like if I, I feel like I'm dealing with sharp edge source code. This is a packet driver for a my, a PS2 micro channel Ethernet card. Yeah, I you know what? I'm probably due for my tetanus shot. I probably was due this year and then um the the thing that we've all been ignoring happened. Wow. Sorry, I, I know I've been completely sidetracked here, but... What's in this how to get it folder? Okay, so this was a... This was apparently, let's actually, so this is what we were actually looking for earlier. The uh, Crynor Packet Driver Collection. It's available on CD, mail, TC, FTP, email, UUCP, and modem. Um, it's probably, and I guess it looks like um, it was distributed as part of Kermit. Which actually makes a lot of sense because Kermit uses the packet driver interface. So Columbia University kept a mirror of this um, of these drivers. Oh man, look at those email addresses: ARPANET or a Bitnet CERN email. God, bring out your dad! Bring out your dad! God, I'm, I'm, I'm going to look at this list. I'm going to find a West Germany. No, okay. It's not that old. But, um... Gopher users can access the collection through gopher.oakland.edu. <laughs> God almighty. Yeah. It's available. You can get it from UUCP. You can do it from one one nine hundred got sources. That is glorious. That is utterly glorious. A nine hundred UUCP number. I don't even know what to make of this. So for people that don't know, um, I I'm assuming most people in chat, at least if you're in the United States, know what an 800 number it is. It's a number that for the caller is free, but when you call, the other side pays. A 900 number is the inverse of that. You pay for both sides of the phone call, and usually you pay a premium on top of that. Um... It's why most, um, shall we say, adult phone lines are 900 numbers because it handles the billing as part of your phone bill. Um, and just there's also um, 700 numbers, but I am actually – I'm debating if I want to save this separately or – not. I'm a, all right. We're just going to save this to the Internet Archive. Um, 
I don't remember. Does the internet? I, I gotta look at. I gotta look at how the internet archive saves this. Can't remember if the archive opens zip files automatically or not, because that's gonna depend on how I upload this. Uh, download options. Show all. How did I upload this originally? Okay, so I uploaded it as the collection of zips. Seer. Um, so we know that this is the the uh, cry the crynor packet driver collection. So let's rename this packet driver collection. Um, and then we're gonna call this archive star archive. Okay, we got that, and then we're gonna make it. We're gonna make a zip file of that, but that'll take a moment. So let's go into archive find, and then we're gonna create file dot list. Okay, so then read me. Uh, how do we want to do this? Read me. This is the uh, Crynor packet driver collection, originally hosted on Crynor.com. Yep, hosted on Crynor.com for MS DAWs compatibles. Uh, for MS DAWs compatibles, these drivers provide a packet interface for use with some DAWs networking software such as MTCP and uh, WAP TCP. Um, this collection was originally found on ftp.columbia.edu as part of the Kermit Permit driver collection. Um, uh, the um, of of the drivers in this pack, only the ne2000.com driver was successfully was sorry I should say was tested. Uh, this collection has been mirrored to the internet archive uh, to prevent loss in case Columbia University's FTP server goes offline. See file.list for a full collection. Okay, I don't even have any good screenshots for this. But like I said, I, I want this backed up. Because if we don't back things like this up, they're going to disappear. I mean, trying to find driver sets for things like my ThinkPad is a giant pain in the arse because you can't easily find them. It, for example, IBM, oh sorry, Intel recently deleted all their old driver web, drivers off their website. Um, and I, I do mean all. Like you can't get anything... I think pre-2015, unless they currently sell it, you know, on top of that, you know, and they're basically doing it the same system space. Uh, last week or the week before, Windows XP can no longer download updates from Microsoft. That's really annoying because Microsoft never had an official way to download them all in mass and mirror it. You could do something with WSUS, but it wasn't what I call super effective. And, you know, there's a lot of things that got fixed in the hot fixes. If you were stuck on XP Service Pack 3 with no other fixes, I don't want to imagine what that came out with because uh, Windows XP SP3. SP3 came out in 2008 and it went. Uh, when did it go to the Bitbucket? And it, it died six years later. 
So, I mean, this is why I feel it's important to back up these things because I look tonight. I was doing a packet driver thing and <sighs> sorry, should I get off my high horse now? I, I don't really tend to want to rant excessively, but it, um, it just kind of irks me on how all this is lost just because, you know, the last mirror or something disappeared. I mean, that's what happened with um, Banyan Vines. Uh, and let me explain what I mean here. So, I, I did a lot of work. That is not Banyan Vines. Um, Banyan... It, this is something I'm currently working on doing a lot of restoring and restoration work. There was a the only essentially website on the internet that preserves anything related to vines is this bear metal, uh, ba metal .com. and they have some of the server stuff. Actually, this looks like this has been updated. Yeah, no, but it's not. All the links here are broken. You try and download the thing, nothing. Uh, some of them do work. Like I was able to grab this client. And I will probably mirror and back this up. But, I mean, other than that, it's all gone. Now, I probably should contact the sysadmin. But, I mean, the last activity on this website was five years ago. Because it was because that this was MIA, I had to try and get my own copy of Vines. I had to crack the copy protection. You know. Interestingly, it does say... It is copyright 2020, although that's probably automatically generated. Uh, that's not what I was looking for. Resource. Is that all? Maybe, maybe they have actually updated this. It's probably worth sending an email. Although some of this looks just flat out ancient. <sighs> Excuse me curious how old is some of this stuff like has any of this been updated in okay i have no idea i some of it looks like it has been updated so maybe i should drop this guy an email the, i know about this website because i found it linked from another one and it was actually linked off the virtual box forms so I'll have to send this guy an email. It's it's right there. It's um I'll do it once the stream is over and see if we can get a get in contact. I'm not optimistic. But you never know. It never hurts to ask. Yeah, um so, folks, it's about 11 o'clock here. I admit I am fading a little bit. So, let's let's get this download up. Let's get this upload down. Let's get this thing thing sorted, and then we'll call it night. I think this is a, a good night with us archiving something. Uh, compress. Let's put this in a actually. Do this. Actually, I think I want to get a collection of... I want to get a list of all these files. Yeah, we're, we're just going to get a list of all these files. Um, I'm just astounded that there's that much, much uh, source code here. So what's the easiest way to do this? If I do that, you know, that's probably the easiest way. And then we'll just do an append to read me. Uh, I'd like to remove my name, please. Okay. All right. Um... Also, my des desktop is running out of disk space. So let's now make an archive out of it. 
Just a standard zip file, please. Uh. And then I just want to put this in a zip file. Create. Cool. All right, that's that. Put it on the Internet Archive. So let's call this. This is called the Crynor Packet Driver Collection Columbia Mirror. And then we're going to take our README file, add it here. Drivers, DAWs, GPL v1. Um, I never remember how to do the tags. The, tag, the Internet Archive has a weird tagging system. So GPL v1, packet drivers, DAWs, um, some source code, uh, Kermit, Columbia University, Mirror. I don't know how much I'll actually help finding it, but if it's on the Internet Archive, there's a decent chance it could be found again. Uh, creator, variant. Actually, I can leave that blank. So that's all that. That's all that. Collection. It's not a test one. There's a lot of licenses in there, so I'm not even going to try. And uh, let's get a good screenshot. It's These things always look better with a screenshot of some sort. Um, I mean, it's completely not necessary, but... Yeah, that looks good. All right. Let's see your video. Let's see your... There is a way to take... The problem is I don't want the menu bar. That's why I'm looking to see if there's a take screenshot button. Okay, and then... Perfect, we got that. Not, not the most perfect thing, but... The, the screenshot's there to make it look nice, not because it's doing anything functional. Um, and then we go there. Any 2000 being used. Okay. Keep scrolling. Uh, remove. Okay. I probably should mirror the entire FTP, but if I just mirror the FTP, it's a little bit harder. So having the Crynor drivers separate is still useful. Now, this, this is the part I dislike most about the Internet Archive is that their upload system is not the nicest. It's actually very slow. So, um, SidePocket, if you're still watching, I'd say start looking for a stream. As soon as this is done uploading, I think we're going to call it for the night. Um, we've been going for three... What?! Why does it think it's spam? <sighs> OK, 
Okay, apparently the Internet Archive doesn't like me. We'll see if this goes through, and otherwise I'm going to have to send them an email. Um... All right, I guess I got to send them an email. Um, okay. We'll do, I'll figure that out later. Uh, side pocket, let's get that stream going. And then tell me when to shut, pull the plug. Ooh. <sighs> <sighs> Thank you all kindly. Okay. All right. This is End Commander signing off. As soon as Side Pocket tells me I'm I'm okay to sign off. All right, folks. With much love, this is End Commander signing off.